Today we're going to shift gears a little bit and talk some geology. Starting with the layers of the earth. You don't need to memorize uh, exact temperatures or the diameter of them, but you should have a general sense of the layers of the earth, starting with the inner core, moving out to the outer core, the mantle, and the crust. Uh, the inner core and the outer core are made of iron and nickel. The difference is that the inner core is solid while the outer core is liquid. Moving out from that, we have the mantle. And the mantle is made of molten or melted rock. Um, and it's circulating around, flowing about, sort of like asphalt. And if we move out beyond the mantle, floating on top is the crust, and the crust is the thinnest layer, and we have both oceanic and continental crust, depending on what's sitting on top of it. I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, so I can show you that the outermost part of the mantle um, is solid. And that, along with the solid crust, make up what we call the lithosphere. And the lithosphere is what makes up our tectonic plates that I'm going to talk about in a little bit. And sometimes they're even called lithospheric plates. So this brings us to the theory of continental drift. Um, we're going to talk about a guy named Alfred Wagner, and that's not the correct German pronunciation, but since I'm currently sitting in South Carolina, I'm going to feel free to say Wagner. Um, but this is the notion that all of our continents were once together as one large continent that have since drifted apart to their present day locations. Um, and this large supercontinent that existed about 200 million years ago was called Pangaea. Now, a claim like that requires a bit of evidence. And the first bit of evidence used to support this idea of continental drift, or some evidence here for continental drift, was the idea that we call geographic matching. Um, in plain language, that means it looks like the continents fit together kind of like a puzzle. South America and Africa seem like they would fit nicely together. And maybe you've noticed this before. Um, but there's also some more evidence here. I want to talk about evidence from rocks real quick. So you see these shaded areas matching here on continents that are on the opposite sides of the ocean and some matching here and some matching here by color. Um, and what that represents is uh, the rock formations on opposite sides of the oceans match an age, type, age structure, um, similarity of ancient rock deposits left behind by glaciers, etc. matching up nicely in the same areas that we noticed that geographic matching. And the last bit of evidence for continental drift is in fossils. Um, we're talking here about fossils of land animals that could not have possibly swum the distance between these two continents. But it's not as though the continents are floating about like rafts on the ocean. Rather, it turns out that we have about seven major tectonic or lithospheric plates that are floating on top of the mantle. And these plates are moving in different directions and at different speeds. And this leads to some pretty interesting things that we're going to talk about for the rest of this chapter. So let's take a look now at what moves those plates about. And when we talked about the layers of the Earth, I didn't mention that the core of the Earth is very hot. We're talking 10,000-ish degrees Fahrenheit hot. And we know that the mantle is liquid, and it's flowing about. And we've already talked about convection currents when it comes to the atmosphere. Well, much like that, the mantle flows about in the same patterns. Um, down here, it's going to be hotter. Out here, away from the core, it's going to be cooler. So the molten rock in the mantle, as it's heated up, it's going to become less dense and rise. It's going to cool, become more dense and sink. And these convection currents are going to continue. And they're going to be happening all over the globe and in three dimensions. And this helps explain plate movement. Now that we've talked about convection currents, this brings us to ocean floor spreading. And you may have heard of the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And a mid-ocean ridge is essentially um, an underwater mountain chain. And the Mid-Atlantic Ridge is well in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So let's take a closer look at a mid-ocean ridge. And you can see here that lava's erupting up from the ocean floor into the middle of the mid-ocean ridge is what we call a rift valley. And as it does this, the magma cools, hardens, forms new ocean floor, and this new crust moves out in both directions on both sides of the mid-ocean ridge. So we'll have newer crust here, older crust here. So you might be wondering at this point, well, if this is going on, then why isn't the Earth just getting bigger and bigger? 
And that's a great question. Um, what's going on, though, is that it's most of it's being recycled. Uh, that oceanic crust gets pushed out away from the mid-ocean ridge. And when it comes into a boundary here with a continent, so you have oceanic crust meeting continental crust, the oceanic crust is more dense and it gets pushed under. And as it gets pushed under, it's pushed back into the mantle where that crust melts again. And most of it just gets recycled back into the mantle. But some of it rises up through the crust. And that's what forms volcanoes. And it's why you'll see a lot of volcanoes, um, certainly on along the coastlines. But we'll look at the Pacific Ring of Fire. And we'll look at some of these areas where large plates are moving towards each other. And we'll get large chains of volcanoes. Um, but also... There's another formation, way that volcanoes form that you need to take a look at. Um, volcanoes like the Hawaiian Islands do not form in this way. They're formed by hotspots, so please make sure you take a look at the hotspots animation that I'm going to be posting for you. So I just want to end here with a larger view of um, seafloor or ocean floor spreading. We have our mid-ocean ridge here with magma coming up cooling, hardening, new ocean floor forming as a result, and moving outward in both directions from the mid-ocean ridge. Here where it gets pushed under the continental crust, um, we call this process subduction, and we would call this area subduction zone. So that's your crash course in tectonics. Um, it's, an, it's a good way to get us started on this unit. And we'll be moving next into faults and earthquakes. So stay tuned.